So now we start in our, in our afternoon talk. Um, I'm very happy uh, to have uh, Gabi Danieli. He's uh, Chief Strategy and Marketing Officer of uh, Coartigo. Uh, nice to have you here. And you're already in the, in the yep. uh, front, front runner line here. Um, your presentation will be flexible factory automation with IO Link wireless motion control solutions. And I think IO Link is a very important topic for a lot of people used to come since years to Hannover Fair. And now the link to uh, 5G. We are very happy to have you here and to hear more about that topic. The stage is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, as mentioned, my name is Gabby from Cortigo. And in today's presentation, we'll be focusing on how we can take flexibility and adaptivity to their maximum with factory automation solutions by implementing and by deploying the IO-Link wireless communication method <coughs> for motion control solutions. And um, in order to give you some real life examples and some real use cases and applications that are being used and how, you know, how extreme the levels of flexibility that can be reached by applying IO-Link wireless can be, I'll focus quite a bit of this presentation on, uh, on the packaging industry and on some examples that we have with, uh, with packaging machines. <coughs> so, since we'll be talking about packaging, let's focus a bit about the problem when we're looking at the packaging industry. Flexibility and adaptivity is a key factor in that industry. <coughs> the problem is there is a trade-off today that needs to be done on machines between speed and flexibility. When you have continuous machines, you want to drive capacity as much as possible on the machines. However, while doing so, in many cases, you're trading off flexibility. You're trading off the amount of products and the amount of packages that you can support. Now you have intermittent machines that are supporting more product designs and more product packages, and they're more flexible. But by doing that, you're trading off the capacity. Therefore, there's, a, there's, a, there's basically a gap, a gap that needs to be bridged. How do we create machines that are both faster and more flexible without trading off one another? And as we know, there are many drivers here that are driving some of these uh, requirements and demands in this market. One is mass customization. You want to be able to have a single machine that's doing and supporting multiple products and multiple product packages and not have a machine for every product. There's a lack of skilled operators, so you can't have numerous machines for numerous products, and you can't have all those manual changeovers. You want to create those changeovers to be as automatic as possible. And of course, there's sustainability. We can't keep making the machines bigger, and we can't keep adding external equipment, and we can't keep uh, you know, making the, uh, the, the, the factory shop floors bigger with more and more machines. We want to reduce the sizes of the machines, we want to reduce the footprint, and we want to make them more sustainable and less um, energy consuming. <clears throat> so that's our problem statement. But with that, I'll start off first of all with explaining what IO-Link Wireless is, and then we'll see how it is applied on these types of solutions. So IO-Link Wireless, in a sense, is actually breaking a lot of the limits that existed up until today with wireless solutions for the industrial space. Typically, there's conventional wireless solutions, be it Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, UHF solutions, and those solutions were not actually designed specifically for factory automation. What we're seeing is that they're mainly used for monitoring kinds of solutions. But when we need to do control, when we need to control actuators, whether it's a pump, a gripper, a valve, a servo motor in motion, then you really need a wireless system that's pretty much cable grade. And this is where IO-Link Wireless comes into place. IO-Link Wireless was launched in 2018 it's actually an extension of the IO-Link standard, which I'm assuming most of you are acquainted with. Um, and it's part of the IO-Link uh, standard. <clears throat> it was designed specifically for factory automation, and it was designed with control and monitoring um, in mind. Some of the attributes that we have for IO-Link wireless. First of all, as mentioned, it's universal. It's part of the IEC IO-Link standard. In addition, it has a latency of 5 milliseconds. That actually means Cycles of 1.6 milliseconds, three repetitions. Very low latency that can deal with actuation. It's very reliable. When we're talking about reliability of a wireless uh, system, we're looking at the packet error rate. The packet error rate of IO-Link wireless is defined in the standard, and of course, any system that's doing IO-Link wireless has to adhere to that. 
is 10 to the power of minus 9 packet error rate. So just to give you an example, if we're taking Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or other conventional systems, they are 10 to the power of minus 3. That means that literally the reliability is a million times more reliable than standard communications, which is very important, again, for these types of uh, motion control solutions. And also, it has to be scalable. We're not talking about two sensors or two actuators. Sometimes we're talking about hundreds of actuators and sensors on a single machine or a single, an, or a single work cell area. So with all these in mind, this is where IO-Link Wireless comes in and how IO-Link Wireless was developed for this industry. So how does an IO-Link Wireless system look like? Very basic uh, architecture. Let's start from the bottom. The bottom is the device level. What you can see is that there's two ways to connect to devices. One is more or less like an adapter. Okay, what I'm holding here in this hand is a bridge. This is an IO-Link wireless bridge. This device, as you can see in the picture in the center there, connected to a smart light or to a, a, a airflow sensor there, is simply plug and play. You take an IO-Link sensor or a, a digital sensor or an analog sensor, and you're basically now converting them to IO-Link uh, wireless. There's also multi-port hubs with multiple IOs that can go um, into the uh, hub and then be converted to IO-Link wireless. The other method to implement and deploy IO-Link wireless on the device side is actually by taking a module and embedding it in the device. Two examples that you see here on the right are a gripper and a uh, tooling machine, uh, a tooling uh, that's used for CNC machines. In that case, we're embedding the modules, the IO-Link wireless modules, with the radio components inside the devices. And I'll show you some examples uh, in a second. Then the messages are transmitted via the IO-Link wireless protocol, which is on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band. These are very narrow uh, channels that are being transmitted, one megahertz channels that are being transmitted all over the, uh, the spectrum with frequency hopping every 1.6 milliseconds. It's a different kind of, uh, it's a different, uh, channel on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, spectrum. It does the frequency hopping, uh, blacklisting, and it coexists with other wireless networks along with very uh, high immunity to noise. You don't need line of sight. This can be in the machine, under the machine, and you're still going to get the transmissions flowing through. All these messages are transmitted to an IO-Link wireless master. The IO-Link wireless master collects the wireless information, but it also uh, communicates at the OT level and at the IT level. <coughs> Industrial Ethernet protocols with the PLC, OPC UA, Ethernet IP, Profinet, Ethercat, but also OPC UA and MQTT up north to the additional applications, whether it's OEE, MES, or any other cloud-based applications that it's communicating with. So now we understand the basics of IO-Link Wireless and how it works. Let's continue on with the examples that I mentioned on the uh, packaging. And what we'll see is that these examples are, are running all across the, the primary packaging phases, secondary, and the tertiary packaging phases. So let's start with an example of smart conveying solutions. One of the things that we're seeing, not just in the packaging industry, but also in the automotive industry, pharmaceutical industry, is the use of smart conveying systems. You have the old conveyors, and now you have the new conveying systems where there's a variable pitch for every mover. Each mover is moving independently in an asynchronous way. However, there is a challenge here still. Even though it's a very nice system that's moving independently with each mover, the mover itself, as you can see, it's a flat piece of metal. There's no cables that can be connected to the movers since it's moving at 4 meters per second and rotating. And now you cannot actuate on the movers. If I want to connect a gripper or a pump or a servo motor, then I cannot actually connect those on the movers. This is where a wireless system that is able to have the low latency that I mentioned with the reliability that I mentioned comes into place. Because if we don't have that control on the mover, we need to have the tools that are holding the products. As you can see here on the right-hand corner in the bottom, there are special tools based on the product size, based on the form factor. So now we are able to add wireless and actually do these actions while in motion on the movers. Okay, so we're enable continuous action while in high-speed motion. We can connect a gripper or a pump on the movers. And what this does, it enables us to do the actions on the mover while in motion. We get more flexibility and we get more speed without the external equipment that's needed to be added to these movers. <coughs> so let's see an example here. 
one of the things we want from a machine in the packaging space is to be able to support multiple product types. It can be different diameter, different shape, different form factor. And every time we're changing that product in a single machine, we need to do a manual changeover. But now, if we would connect a gripper or a pump, as you can see here in the illustration on the left, but also in a real life machine, which I'll show you a video in a second, we're controlling the gripper. Therefore, that package of, uh, of biscuits there, if I'm changing the size of the package, I'm also going to be changing the grip. And that grip is going to change in motion through the PLC over the air. And by that, I'm creating ultimate flexibility that's enabling me to support multiple product types on that single machine without manual changeovers. Now, we talked about the primary package of the product, which can, which can vary in form and shape, but also the package itself. Now, the secondary package. You can have a package with one product in it, with two products, four, six, eight, you name it, right? And for all of those, again, you, you need to do a different setup, a different configuration, and in some cases, a different machine that will be able to support a single package versus a package that holds eight or 12 products. Now, in the same way here, we said that there's a vari variable pitch for each one of these movers. So each one of these movers can be controlled in an asynchronous way. And now I can create these packages of two or one, as you can see on the left-hand side, or four. And again, everything is controlled without manual intervention. Everything is done over the air with the PLC. I'm maintaining the flexibility and the speed. In the same way, I can also add a servo motor that's going to rotate the product. In many cases, when we're putting in the product inside the, uh, the box, you want to rotate it so the labels will be in the same orientation. Now think about it, how this would be done with a regular conveyor system without this type of solution. You would have five, six, seven delta robots, external robots, doing the pick and place. You would have other robots doing the, uh, the product uh, placement and changing the product form size or the tooling. Okay, so we're eliminating also all that external um, equipment. <coughs> Another example now, on that same conveyor system, again, I can now do sort and eject. I can run it through a station that's taking basically uh, a picture and inspecting the product, and I can eject or release the product automatically from the mover. I don't need an external robotic arm, for example, to take the product out of the line. <coughs> And of course, we mentioned sustainability. As you can see, this is the mover system, which I'll show you the, the movie in just a second. So this is a smart transport track system, um, and it has movers on it, um, like uh, 16 movers on each one of these uh, loops, which have the grippers that are controlled. What you can see here, again, less mechanical components, less footprint of the machine, no external robotic arms or delta robots, so the machine is not consuming a lot of space. So I'm reducing the footprint on the shop floor. I'm reducing the number of machines also. Not just is the machine smaller, but less machines. Because now they can support multiple products and multiple packages with the same machine. And I'm also conserving um, energy. And in some cases, when we're talking about pharmaceuticals or uh, electric battery manufacturing, you need these machines to be in clean rooms. And by making smaller machines with less equipment, I'm able to actually make smaller clean rooms and not consume a lot of space, which, of course, maintaining a clean room is also not uh, you know, something that's sustainable and consumes a lot of energy and costs quite a bit. <coughs> so with that, let's take everything I mentioned about this specific system, the different product types, different package types, the sustainability, the footprint reduction, and see how this machine now is completely flexible. line with two packages, packages of two, packages of one. Movers can be put together or separately. And you can control the size of the package by controlling the grip. connected to the gripper. 
And if you're wondering how it gets the power, it's an inductive power rail that's running on the conveyor system. running in parallel. Okay, so now we talked about smart conveying solutions, but in the same way, you also have rotary tables, you have carousels, and in that case, you have the slip rings with many cables running through the slip rings, uh, uh, enabling, uh, basically creating uh, situations where you don't have a lot of flexibility to add more I.O. on those rotary tables or carousels. You also have maintenance issues with the slip rings and the cables running through those, uh, through those center axis, and in this way, we're able to actually add sensors and actuators on the moving uh, tables and on the carousels uh, to add sensors or actuation, like, holdi like holding the bottles. A lot of these solutions are used, as you know, in the capping, in capping machines, filling machines. And this is another way, uh, especially here in the primary uh, packaging, where IO-Link wireless can be uh, implemented. The other example is robotics. In some cases, of course, you need to still need the robots, uh, material handling, logistics. And in some cases, what we're seeing is the amount of cables that are running on the robots, the amount of mounting accessories. You have sometimes these robots with the end of arm tools that have 50, 60, or 70 IOs, sensors and actuators, on a single end of tool robotic arm. This is creating a, a high total cost of ownership in terms of the deployment, both of the cables, which are high torsion cables that you need to deploy on such robots, the mounting accessories, and of course, limited flexibility. By adding IO-Link wireless, now you're able to control the actuators, you're able to get sensor data on the robots, and basically you're keeping all the wiring to the sensors on the end of arm tool. So there's no motion from the end of arm tool along the arm. You're eliminating the cables from the end of arm, from the, uh, along the end of arm. And again, power, power is, is uh, received through the end of arm. There's always power. All you need is a single power connection, and then you distribute it to all the devices on the end of arm tool. So what we're seeing here, uh, if we're just focusing on the packaging industry uh, for, for this example here, that the IO-Link wireless can actually increase the flexibility, increase the capacity, enable mass customization, simplify the maintenance, and basically, in many cases, actually create solutions and machine designs uh, that were not possible uh, before. And we can see this along the primary packaging, secondary, and tertiary packaging. One more example I want to uh, wrap up this session with to show you how reliable um, this solution is and, and not just enabling also the flexibility. So this is an example of a, of a tooling manufacturer for CNC machines. Now, one of the problems with CNC machines is the rotation itself. You have machines rotating at 6,000 rounds per minute, and it's not possible to measure the force or the vibration or any other parameters while machining at the tooling point. All those measurements are done while the machine is not in operation mode, and also <coughs> they're done not at the clamping point and not at the tooling point. In this example, what you can see here on the right-hand side We've actually embedded IO-Link wireless inside the jaw that's connected to the chuck there, okay? It's rotating at 6,000 rounds per minute. It's uh, connected to a vibration sensor, a force sensor, and the temperature sensor, and transmitting that data continuously while, while the machine is rotating. So again, what we're seeing here is that by adding this wireless capability, we've enabled complete flexibility to do the measurement while the machine is running. And also, we're enabling solutions and applications that were not possible uh, to do before. And this, of course, enables you to do uh, machine optimization on the fly, to get the feedback on the fly. It enables you to do improved maintenance and tra traceability and quality assurance because you're getting the measurements in the most precise way possible while machining at the clamping point. 
So to summarize this, uh, we talked a lot about flexibility. We talked a lot about examples in the packaging industry. But at the end of the day, what IOLink Wireless is, is enabling, because it was designed both for control and for monitoring, and specifically for motion control solutions, it's essentially enabling your machines to do more. And it's enabling you to do uh, applications that were not possible before. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. Nice examples of how it's working in the industry. Yeah. Can, you, can you give us some figures or an, an, an feeling for uh, compared to these three examples of uh, so robotics, pick and place, or the uh, logistics, and uh, the last example from the machinery industry, how many uh, um, people are using um, the systems? So there's, uh, there's a few dozens of uh, machine builders that are already you know, building packaging machines. Um, it's in the pharmaceutical industry, food and beverage industry, um, also uh, electrical battery uh, assembly uh, industry. Um, several uh, machine builders, also a few dozens that are working through the uh, room, who is the, uh, the tooling manufacturer. Um, and, and these things are actually public. You can see some of them, so vendors like DMG Murray on CNC machines that are using them. And who's and front runner here? The lo logistics or the machinery industry? In CNC, it's mainly for metal works and, and uh, you know, in, in those cases, the, the, the tooling. Uh, robotics, we see that uh, material handling, logistics, uh, automotive manufacturing. Um, and again, as I mentioned, uh, the, uh, the smart conveying systems, rotary tables, carousels, a lot of that in the packaging industry. Um, some numbers around, let's say, you know, ROI, if you take, you know, Six machines, basically, that would support uh, a blend of you know, 30 or 40 products that are limited, for example, are, are, are you know, reduced to one machine, Okay, as an example. Okay, nice example. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Okay, that's not the case. So, thank you very much, Gabi Danieli of Cortaigo. Uh, nice to have you here, and I wish you a very successful exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone.